Good evening and a very warm welcome to my thought for the day. Today I'm going to be thinking with you about the verse from Galatians. All of you are one in Christ Jesus. Let's begin with a prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, meet us now through your spirit. Remind us of your living presence and risen power. In a world where fear is strong and hope seems threatened, may your resurrection life flow within us, convincing us of the blessings you hold in store. And may that assurance sustain us this evening and always. Amen. Now this morning found me sitting on my balcony, a cup of coffee in my hand, listening to the birds, and in the background, the radio was on. It was when I heard the presenter of Woman's Hour producing, um, um, mentioning an item about books that I turned up the volume and listened properly. It seems that for the first time, black British women writers are topping the UK book charts. Bernadine Evaristo for fiction, a wonderful novel which I've read, and Rennie Edo Lodge for non-fiction. That's wonderful, I thought. But as I heard Jane Garvey interviewing a woman from a black publishing company, I realised it's not that simple. This editor pointed out that while of course, of course we should be celebrating those black authors' achievements, after all they've sold a huge number of books between them, but she showed me that it took a man's brutal death and then the Black Lives Matter protests to spark interest in us white people. It took yet another murder to prompt us to want to educate ourselves about black lives, to read those books that are written by people who are black. So once again, I found myself wondering how I might best respond. I'm sure like all of you, I'm not knowingly racist and I have very little experience of living in an oppressed minority. I did live in Papua New Guinea for five years and there I was with my husband in a minority, but we were so privileged as white missionary teachers we were paid more than our locally born colleagues and despite our, our protestations, the local congregation at the Lutheran church we went to absolutely refused to use our Christian names. Out of respect, they called us Master and Mrs. In fact, the only time I felt oppressed was in the early 1990s when I was active in the movement for the ordination of women. At that time, I felt discriminated against because of my gender. I was upset that the church authorities appeared not to care that I was being denied the opportunity for, to train for ordination to the priesthood because I was a woman. And I was angry. I was really angry at the, the unjust business that being female wasn't something that I'd chosen. Being female wasn't something I could change. Perhaps it was a bit like being black. Which takes us back to racism. An issue which is very much alive today, with the Prime Minister announcing the setting up of yet another inquiry into it. So in answer to my own question about how I should respond, I think there are three things. Firstly, I need to be honest that I have experienced very little discrimination. Secondly, I can own my own privilege, if that makes sense. I can acknowledge I'm one of the lucky ones and use my voice to call for the um, implementation of the recommendations for racial justice when they are eventually made. And despite what the black editor on the radio said, about it taking a murder to get us white people to read black books, I might actually 
read that non-fiction bestseller. It's called Why I Am No Longer Talking to White People About Race. We're going to come to a, a short time of prayer now. And I want us to think about the uh, gradual opening up of, of the restrictions. Our churches are going to be open for an hour on alternate days this week. And with more shops open, I think that perhaps we should thank God for the easing of lockdown. Not forgetting, though, those people who still have to shield, there are so many of them. For those who are losing their jobs, I want to pray for them, and especially for those whose loved ones have died as a result of this pandemic. So, let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for the easing of the lockdown. We thank you for individuals who can now meet up with family members, for those who can go shopping again, for those children who can have a little time at least at school. But we pray too for those whose futures are still uncertain. Keep them under the shadow of your mercy, we pray. Be with all those, we pray, whose loved ones have died. Be with those who have lost their jobs. Be with those people who are sick and dying. May they know the warmth and strength of your love. Sustain and support, we pray, those people who must continue to isolate and lift up all who are brought low so that we may all, black and white, male and female, rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And a prayer of blessing. May the Father shower his love upon you. May the risen Son strengthen you in faith. May the Spirit breathe new life afresh into you and give you his peace. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you this evening and remain with you forever. Amen.